it's irritating, y'all. It, 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 it grinds my gears. And this is my ex-teammate. One of my this is my backup point guard right here. Now they going they gonna give us a hot take, something dumb. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people though are complaining about the high scoring in the league now. Mm-hmm. And I've said I want I've wondered aloud, maybe they do they need to look at or at some point will they need to look at maybe cutting off the three point line at the free throw line extended? You know, at the end where the arc ends. And basically, you're cutting out that corner three and a little bit more. Man, of it. What, and what, well, hold on, let me explain. What the we need to explain for? This sounds dumb. No, ha. that's what we fucking hear, man. This is what we get, bro. Hot takes. Right that here. would bring back that. Hey, I'm gonna explain. It would bring back post play. It would bring back mid range play, and you would still have the three. Like now, you know what the funny part about this is? The most elite players in the game besides besides Steph your scoring talent in the NBA still plays basketball they do not play analytics Kevin Durant is an amazing three-point shooter he is a mid-range guy Devin Booker mid-range guy Shea mid-range guy right Jimmy Butler mid-range like these guys are mid-range Kyrie juggernaut like there's only a few but Luca mid-range these are mid-range assassins I don't know what ba- that's what I'm saying they don't watch the basketball game Kawhi is gonna kill you with the mid-range Paul George one two pop, pop. It, it ha- it's not gone anywhere man the players who actually are killing does it Fox Brunson Come on, it's not gone. It's a lot of threes because just sorry ass players get to shoot them shit. <laughs> That's it. Just sorry players who didn't get to shoot back in the early 2000s, then they, they they get to chuck some shit up now. That's all. Now you see this, Antonio. Teams, I mean, look, I'm gonna give them credit because they're smart. When Embiid had 73, where you, where you think that was from? All the analytics are telling them three, layup or dunk or free throw. And the teams are smart, and that's what they're doing. And now the defenses can't keep up. So I'm, you sound like you would Here's be against something like that. Here's but what are your thoughts right on it? Yes. Here's the problem. The last line you just said, that's my issue. That's my only issue. It's the fact that the defenses can't keep up. It's not the fact that they can't keep up. The rules don't allow them to keep up. Right. That's my one problem. That's, if there was one change, like, you know how the game was played in the, in the 1990s? Right? And, and checking it out, right. Into, right. There's a, there's a happy medium that I feel like the NBA is missing. It doesn't have to go all the way back to the 1980s where... Right, you know, we don't want to see... Right. right, it's getting ring-necked and, and his glasses are quiet. We don't need all that, right? We don't need that. This is the biggest misconception that's been going on in media for the longest. Hand-checking. Because no one knows what they're actually talking about. No one knows what they're talking about. They do not, you you do not know exactly what hand checking is, was, what it did. So look, on my show, let me see, On we have somebody who was in before, right? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Here we go. Now, Josiah's son, Marcus Johnson. I asked him a question here because I know the rules. I know what hand checking is and what it wasn't. And he's going to say something. I had to ask him so I could give the audience a visual of different eras and what was hand checking to his era versus hand checking to the 90s and the 2000s. So we understand when you say bring back hand checking, it's like, which one? Doing what they would do it. So. Up, Can you explain something? Because I, I read a rule, and you you would be you would know better. So okay, so today, right when everybody talks about the hand checking rule, what was the actual hand checking rule in the seventies versus the nineties? Mm. Josiah's daddy, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm trying to remember. Was there a two hand hand check yeah. at first? I mean, I think the rule, the the understanding, the principle was that if you stuck principle. your arm and locked your elbow. Standard. They would call a foul. Even in your era. Yeah, but okay. as long as you. So even in his era, even in his era, so even in his era, arm locked like this was illegal. This is illegal. So you had to have it like this. You had to have a bend in it. Hold on. So you had to have, you had to have, if this is someone's back, you had to play like this. 
you couldn't you couldn't extend, which I, I which I don't give a f- you spin it like this. I don't. But when you extend it like this, you're basically just pushing them. So the guy is sitting there like that. That that was the only reason. Other than that, if you if you give break, right, that means you're not lodging the player. Think about what I'm saying. If you have it extended, they can't tell if you're pushing the player from backing down. So as long as it was like this, it can it showed them that you wasn't forcefully pushing the guy forward. Right now, had the elbow bent, you could pretty much guide a play. Now, before my era, so now in his era, this is what a hand check was then. Let me take this off, so y'all understand when we're talking about hand check, y'all know the difference between a hand check. Right today, you can still do this. His era, I can do this and this. Right. So I can sit there now. Think about how this looks. I can sit there because you remember. They played in the post. It was inside out. So most of guards didn't play like this. They played like this on the baseline. So the guy who's guarding him is sitting there doing this, and he has his hand here. So if you if you sit there trying to dribble, I have one hand on your back, and I have one hand gripping here, so you couldn't go that way. So I'm keeping you in this corridor. I got gripping the side. So when you hear people say, yeah, he gripped me, I'm gripping their side and I'm holding them like this, keeping them on this side. That was the two hand hand check. They took that off 94. So basically when you tried to drive, you couldn't touch with two hands. So if I'm driving at you and someone's driving and my first New York Knicks, as soon as you try to drive, use both hands to stop your momentum. Then I can just get in front of you. So they took that off. That's what the hand check all the way up into 94 was. It was when I'm getting ready to drive and you use two hands to stop all my momentum. This, this sitting there doing this right here, that they still do that today. <laughs> Soon as a nigga drive, the first thing you do is put your hand out there to try to slow them down. It's a natural behavior, right? Soon as somebody drives, I, I I go right here first and then I slide my feet. Back then, you can do that. That is the difference between the hand check that y'all never heard of, right? Because by the time, by the time like Iverson came in, you still had the one in it, but you just push it off. In the early 70s with Norm Van Leer. Norm Van Leer I played with with the Milwaukee Bucks at the very tail end of his career. And he got called for a couple of early aggressive hand Mm. checks with two hands. And he kept complaining to Earl Strom, the official, and they called him for a third one. So the rest of the quarter, he played defense with his hands behind his back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he would just slide his feet. They gave him a tech for that because he was showing up the officials. So. Yeah, see, that's what I said. I read something where... So so I was watching this video. I was watching this video, and they did a hell of a breakdown. And it kind of explains it all for us. But before that, let me go do this real quick. Listen, listen, listen. This is something new. This ain't the real one. This ain't the real one, y'all. This is just me testing some shit. Because y'all know I want to cook, right? Kenyon cooks too, but they just, they just, I'm just playing with ideas. Ready, go. Hey, that was cool, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just got to cook. But you're trying to cook up some shit. Man, who the fuck? I only played 10 years and I think I know of it. I played 10 years. He's where he a basketball genius because you only played 10 years, barely. But when I was playing in those 10 years, what was I doing? Studying, understanding rule. Right? I, I don't know if you know the history of just when I came into the NBA, right? I had to bend rules. I had to understand rules. I wish I, I, I want to put, I want to get uh, Eric, the referee up here, so he can tell you guys. Every summer, I came to them and I showed them moves to tell me if it was a travel or not. Working on a move, I went to them. What is this? Is this a travel or not? What other, that's what James Harden does with refs. That's why. Offense has more of an advantage over a defensive player because offense knows if these are the guys that's going to call a carry and stuff, let me just go to them in the summer. Because what ends up happening is we'll work on a move all summer long. Guess when the first time they seen it in the game, preseason. And they got to make up their mind in real time. So they can let a move go through preseason and then go back to him like, yo, that's the fuck about. And then they'll start calling it. Or they'll call something. And then they realize that wasn't a travel. That happens all the time. Now, here's a video that it kind of explains because this guy kind of, I don't know who he's talking about or 
who he's going at. But he basically dug down on defense. Has anybody ever heard of this page, Legends of Winning? That it's the one and only Legend of Winning, aka Low, and I'm back with another video. Over the past couple of years, there have been a handful of people in the NBA community who are willing and able to go back and really challenge the perception of people in the NBA I just want to ask y'all, Can I mean, this is 90 some right let me know mm -hmm. what y'all did the, the hand infamous hand check, okay? no hand, in no hand. A... just wondering I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that a lot just point out where i don't Go see no and hand really hand. challenge the perception of what we deem to be great basketball and quite frankly i welcome those people with open arms but when you have people who are attempting to challenge perceptions that have been set in stone for several years now the one big problem that consistently becomes a reoccurring theme is misinformation. Misinformation that unfortunately is trickled down and passed through a community that may not be willing enough nor able he did that shit again? Damn. to actually go out of their way to be properly informed. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video. Two to three weeks ago, Jimmy High Roller uploaded a video challenging the idea that 80s and 90s basketball, especially on the defense. Where's the handshake? Uploaded a video. Just, just, just look at it. The idea. Remember, this is this is the toughest era of basketball, and you have a turn and face. And, and look how he played defense. Ball, especially on the defensive end, was nowhere near as difficult as no foul. And they call it a foul. And <laughs> older <laughs> people try to look at it. Oh it man! If Andrew Davis did that today. Now let me be look very it. clear on what I'm about to say. I support Jimmy High Roller. Subscribe to his channel. Hit the notification bell and everything. Where's the handshake? And watching that oh, video they from call, start wait, to finish, hold on, hold, I can tell you right on. now, there is a lot of misinformation in that video. In that video channel, hit the notification bell. Yeah. I support Jimmy High Roller. Subscribe to his channel. Right. Hit the notification bell. No handshake. Bell and everything. And watching that video nah, from start to finish, I can tell you right now, the there's a lot of misinformation in that video. And unfortunately, I don't believe Jimmy High Roller thoroughly understands how bad of a job he did of conveying the message that he was attempting to convey in that video. And unfortunately... See, the problem sometimes when they're putting in a new rule, when they're putting in a new rule, they don't really... It's a, it's a, it's a theory. It's a theory, and they just go in real time. So what happens is they over abuse it to then reel it back. So when they first implemented the hand check or the no two hand hand check, whatever they were coming up with the time, they're gonna blow the whistle a bunch early, and then eventually go back to normal like every time. Because of that video, and due to it touching literally over a million people. There have been a lot of people who have consistently attempted to regurgitate some of the talking points that I've seen in that video within the last two to three weeks without thoroughly understanding how yeah, many people travel. Now. And so today, I'm going to try my hardest to not only correct, but rightfully inform as many people as I possibly can. Clarification added to prohibit handshaking through rigid enforcement, allowing a defensive player to retain contact with his opponent so long as he does not impede his opponent's progress. So since 1979, it has been completely illegal to handshake players in the NBA. Since 1979, it's been illegal to handshake in the NBA. People read rules and don't know what they're reading. Eh, not <laughs> really. The rule that Jimmy High Roller is referring to was the NBA's first attempt to try to reduce the impact of handshaking in the NBA, but it failed miserably for multiple reasons. For starters, it allowed the defensive player to put their hands on the hip of the offensive player so long as it did not impede their progress. Now, the reason why... Now, you heard what he said, right? He said, put... Sorry. Put your hand on your hip. If I'm post, if I'm, if my back to the basket is like this, this is my hip, correct? I'm waiting for my big man. Hip. Well, what happens when I go this way? The only way you get your hand on my hip is if I'm already by you, right? And I'm sitting there running alongside of you. That's why I said once players went downhill, hand check was just pointless. And you'll see, you'll see every time there's a hand check. Why this rule was such a massive failure is because. Like look, look at the big, look at the, look at the guard, right? This guard up here, look how he has to run his offense. If you push pressure on him, what do you think he's going to do? Turn his back. Because unless the offensive player was making an obvious or dramatic. Right. So here you go. Hand check. Dramatic move hand check. from one hand to the next, attempting to switch directions. There's no way that the referees were going to know how much pressure the defensive player was applying with a hand check that could potentially be impeding their progress. Six. 
And I can tell you, this had to be, this right here had to be 94, 95. This had to be 94. They had to take these two hands off and just say just one. So if you touched a guy with two hands at any point, it was a travel. Almost like Derek Harper was going to see what he could get away with. And Joe Crawford, all it's hard to tell how much resistance he is showing. Where the hand check at? Where the hand check at, y'all? You were talking about how much pressure does. First of all, you're allowed a white hand check, but not to impede the progress of the Get the ball. He of couldn't even dribble up the court. At him! Look at him! Who couldn't play in the era? I I'm confused. You're saying the guards and look, these kids, they can't even dribble with pressure. You're allowed a white hand check, but not you know, when I played, they had a, it was a full court press. Look, look, look. This nigga turn. Look at that. Look at, hold, hold, look at this. Hand check. This is the findies. So, yeah, the rule that Jimmy Hyrule was referring to did not eliminate hand checking simply because the rule was written. Hand check, the hand check is on, no call yet. Way too loosely, and it still gave way too much judgment call on the referees, in which, for the most part, referees still allowed players hand to check, hand check no call. and potentially even impede the progress. See, that now this, this what he has right now. You see what his natural movement was? Is this, this is what the reason which it took the part, referees still allowed players to like the one hand is fine. even impede the process. This, you see how he has both hands on him. So if Jordan tried to take off, he has him corralled with both hands. That's what they took off for more movement. Progress of offensive players. Like, like you see Jordan can't, Jordan can't like establish himself because the dude is putting so much pressure pushing him forward they were trying to make their moves but more importantly the real reason why i know for a fact the rule that jimmy high roller is referring to did not eliminate hand checking is because it's true look 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 at the guards then look at the guards then they're not they he has to turn his back because he's not scored. He has to wait for the big man. So he's not going to, he can't dribble enough to keep the ball in front. He Remember, they don't have this to just keep staying forward. So because they don't have this, they had to turn their back. Their bag was little. They didn't have duffel bags. Masters at that. And the Derek yeah, he was, was, was easy. As a great Chuck Daly just stated, ooh, the physicality. Look, you see this? Look, y'all see that? So when I said, look, they took that three-point line off. They took that three-point line. It went all the way down to boom, boom, boom. From the offensive and defensive player on the perimeter. As a nation of trying to keep perimeter players at bay from attacking the basket. And Chuck Daly yeah, isn't the right. only adaptation of trying to keep perimeter players at bay. So because you couldn't hand check or you couldn't extend it, they let you put your forearm on them. At bay from attacking the basket. Now look, look at this. Now you look, and Chuck Daly isn't the he only ain't going nowhere. Look at him turning his back. You got a forearm drama. on you. You you telling me you can put a forearm on some guard today? How you gonna put a forearm on Fox? Is Fox gonna be sitting there just trying to run offense? You think John Morant is sitting there trying to run offense for you can there's no big man for them to even just sit there in muddy waters on the defense like this. 90s as well. Phil Jackson is also on record stating defenders then started using their forearm in the shoulder area and hip area of the offensive player in effort to reroute the offensive player or to slow them down. But the most important thing that I want to convey was the reasoning behind changing the rules. As Rod Thorne, who at the time was the vice president of basketball operations, basically we were trying to encourage more driving to the basket. I told you, 90, who was retired when this shit came in? Michael Jordan left, so they needed more offense. Michael Jordan retired, we need more offense, god damn. Yeah, what do you think about JJ's take on taking out the defensive three-second rule since the space in his I wouldn't mind. That'll help because there is too much space. Chris, that, that'll help. There's too much space. Our hopes is that teams I'll think about will it. get a few more shot opportunities or draw fouls, whatever the case may be. We like to force some players to develop a mid-range game. So this didn't happen in 80s, people. This didn't happen in the 80s when it was so physical. This happened when Michael Jordan retired and they felt that the scoring was going to go down. So they had to put in new rules where they put the three point line closer, tried to rechange the hand checking route so there, there's more points to make up for Michael Jordan retiring. Now, the reason the advantage is something also says, and actually speaking upon the era in NBA history. Now, within that decade, teams average 109 points per. So in the 80s, hey, all my 80s people in the 80s, the hardest defense in America, they scored 109 points a game. 80s people with the greatest defense 
in y'all minds, in, in y'all air, in y'all minds that was embedded in you by dummies was the hardest era. They scored a hundred and nine points. Okay. You know, they're moving faster than the eighties was moving faster than the Phoenix Suns when Steve Nash was there per game. In the 1990s, NBA teams averaged one. 90s, 101. 101 points per game. And in the 2000s, NBA teams averaged. Nine, 2000. That's my era, y'all. So when people say that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, look at what era scored the least. Look at what era became the hardest era defense. Let me see, so you can see my mouth. Defensively. See, I think because you got the clothesline in the 80s and the 70s, y'all thought it was defense. It was called a foul. Defense is playing it without fouling. Not, hey, no layups. No layups. No layups, y'all. Do y'all know how stupid you sounded? There was a guy who averaged 37 points a game in that era with no threes, and y'all was fouling the fuck out of him. If the defense was that great, how could he average 35 and 37 again? Think about what the fuck I'm saying. How does he average 35 a game and 37 a game if the defense was that great? Bridged only 97 points per game. I'm sorry if I come across a bit too harsh, but quite frankly, I just don't know why Jimmy Hyrule was trying to make this argument. Even though, yes, there were rules that were set in place that potentially could have made it a little bit more difficult for some players, especially those on the perimeter, to score. But easily, and everybody should know this, but easily, the most influential variable to how many points are being scored on a year to year basis is pace. The simple fact that Jimmy High Roller never brought up pace in and of itself makes that argument completely invalid. And if you were to ever look at pace and graph it, you would clearly tell that pace was significantly higher in the 80s and early 90s. So 80s and 90s, they were moving a lot faster than the 2000s. Probably all that cocaine they was taking. <laughs> let's just be, let's just be honest, y'all. Huh? Hey, pace was real good. You do a whole bunch of that. Oh, shit. Let's go. <laughs> right? When I call them a bunch of animals, <laughs> the facts are here. Huh? They all, they moving fast as fuck all right here. No left. <laughs> then it was in the late 90s and practically the entire two. Get the, the oh, end after shit. two days, we saw a huge explosion of scoring. Hmm. I wonder what that was. The handshake check rule was clarified, redefined, and re-implemented in 2004. And according to most fans, this is when defense lightened up and scoring became exponentially easier. So first and foremost, let me add some clarification. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I do that? The check rule was clarified, redefined, and re-implemented in 2004. And according to most fans... Oh, so y'all, did y'all see the graph where 80s, they was moving a lot faster? Then early 2000. This is the pace of the game. This is the pace of the game. Let's go see. What explosion was clarified, redefined, and re-implemented in 2004. And scoring became exponentially easier. So first and foremost, let me add some clarification here. Because Jimmy High Roller is using terminology as if hand checking was fully eliminated in the NBA, in which it never was. So the rule in which Jimmy High Roller is referring to As I said, listen, like you don't feel any freaking fact. Listen, yeah. Flagrant foul, but that's what I'm saying. They think flagrant foul. Listen to what is flagrant foul. It's still a foul. Foul. No matter how hard you hit me, it's still a foul. Period. It don't matter if you're telling me soft or not. I'm still getting two free throws off of your behavior. The problem is they just started penalizing for those type of hits. That's it. But to further redeem high redo, the only set of that was the word. And potentially, because of the fewer points being scored, a lot of people were fearful that the NBA ratings were starting to decline as well. Because oh wow, so the NBA rate that, that goes against this goes against everything. Being a slower pace means there's going to be fewer points to be scored. And potentially, because of the fewer points being scored, a lot of people were fearful that the NBA ratings were starting to decline as well because of this. Ain't that some sh Ain't that some shit? That is the opposite of what they're being said now. They're saying no defense, the game is boring. The reason the game changed back then is because the original game that was created was so fast paced moving. Remember, there was no dribbling back then, just passing it up. They were scoring 116, 109 when it got to the 90s in the early 2000s, scoring 97 points, that type of defense, they said, is going to ruin the game. In the 2000s, when they scored 97 a game, they 
thought the game was going to be ruined and the fans wasn't going to like it because the scoring was going to be so low that they had to introduce different things because the game was fast as fuck. So there needed to be some type of action. And Jerry Colangelo, the great Jerry Colangelo, came to the rescue of David Stern in the NBA and basically told him that as a lifer, as a diehard NBA fan, if he was starting to be turned off by the NBA, then it was going to be a major problem. And David Stern completely... Nobody realized who this is, right? He owns the Phoenix, he owned the Phoenix Suns at the time. So the guy who owned the Phoenix Suns at the time is the one who's making up the rules moving forward. He agreed with him, thus appointing him to a player. They got together at the movie Evolve, to be more accurate, to a place in which committee that was given to the off-movie legal deed to be made hold on, hold on. A, in zone defense, made sure that the time that was obvious that changes needed to be made right away. And with that being stated, this is indeed the committee that decided to remove illegal defense, virtually allowing zone. And with that being stated, First thing I did when we met was show to show everybody a videotape. I had to make a diff. I had to made of different errors. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and word come right. It's pretty revealing stuff. It was evident that in the 60s and the 70s, guys were free to go pretty much anywhere on the court. 20 years later, no half court offense. It just wasn't how our game was played. So the early 2000s is what changed the NBA, not the fucking 80s. This is indeed the committee that decided to remove illegal defense, virtually allowing zone defense, made sure that the time that was given to the offensive player. It took away illegal defense and then gave zone defense and brought in the zone. Now the zone with the check made it more. We had to sit around more, which kind of sounded stupid when you think about it now. Right, well. You know, how the game was going to be faster if you have a zone. And that that that, that would be, that right there would have been like, I don't know. Because now you're forcing me to shoot jumpers. Now I got to sit there and pass the ball around a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, they ran offense, but I'm going to show you their offense. When you see ran offense, you, you'll see it. It's across the half court line was reduced. Furthermore, players further from the basket to pre of the it's one it's opening up a little patience was anticipated when we implemented the package back in 2001 that fundamentally it would change the game collectively all three of those rules allowed the game to breathe so so this is not i want you to think about it in reality remember the hardest era in basketball from the consensus eyes and the media is the 80s and the 90s, but they didn't have a defensive problem in constricting scoring until the mid or the early 2000s. That was my era. I came in 2001 and I showed y'all highlights and I said, these motherfuckers was lunch meat to me because then there was nobody coming downhill when I got into the NBA. Like Mike Bibby, I mean, how fast is he? was he getting to the lane? Right, He was a jump shooter. So with that being said, this is not some conspiracy. Game wasn't a this shooter. is not my opinion. This up. is not some aiming. And because the eyes age of the Olympic play a fact. Jerry Colangelo, again, the man. Who Look, he changed the rule, and this is his player. He changed the rule for his player so his player can move a lot more. It was exclusive about him in the mid 2000s. He was a GM near to the new from the fuels head of that's the team that heavily. These are all the guys that changed the rules. They, they worked for the Phoenix Suns. That's right. Get easier for perimeter players that played before to affect checking was allowed. I you exactly after the rule change. This is this is like this is like shit that literally y'all media does using the last three years that Gary Pick played in it in Jimmy Hyro. Now for those right, so this is the shit they do. They'll say, All right, look how look how media does does it, right? This is how media makes points before the handshake check, then after the handshake. So let's take somebody like Gary Payton before the hand check, but before it was 18 points after, right? They, they try to make this comparison. And then what ended up happening is you look at his career before this is how many years he played after when he was on a bench and he was an old shell of himself, right? The last three years. So you, you, you fabricate the fucking numbers to prove your point. That's the problem with some of these stats. People with this last they make it so they can they can prove what they're trying to prove. Equalize other years again scoring because again thing efficiently. Yeah, I want to. I see multiple playing a part right. of the defensive system, but every single time I watch footage, I see multiple players just sagging off of their assignment. I see big men just hanging around the lane, and quite frankly, even though yes, you either had to defend your man or commit to a double team, I see a lot of teams committing to a double team. 
knowing that the opponent doesn't really have any offensive players now committing to a double time. Now, this is why offense, this is why defense seemed so great in those days, even though stats doesn't support it. Look at it, right? The assignment, I see big men just hanging around the lane, and quite frankly... Right now, now, you see everybody, Jordan, right? He ain't got nobody. That nigga ain't got nobody. He's sitting here, he's sitting here, right? There was this illegal defense. Everybody had to be close to their man, but they're not. Now, anybody know what team this is? This is the Bulls, right? Right? This is the Bulls. Who's the shooter on the Bulls? Who Who is the long-range threat on the Bulls? So when you say the defense was great, you have to actually ask yourself, why was it great? Was it great because the defense was tough or was it great because they didn't have the shooters on the court at the time? No, I'm talking about on the court right now. They know John Paxson. They, you don't see no white skin on that court right now. Now, tell me what the Bulls offense would have looked like if Jordan was on the court and with him, Paxson, Ku Coach, Kerr, right? Tony Hodges. If those four players on the court with Jordan with their – huh? Shit, shit would have looked fun as fuck for MJ then, huh? If MJ had Paxson and Kerr and was it Craig Hodges and at the same time, if they were on the court all at the same time, you, you see how fucking the game would look then for Michael Jordan? Oh shit, it would look like, oh my God, Golden State Warriors. There's fucking five shooters. There's four shooters out there. There's no hanging around a goddamn basket anymore. Even though, yes, you either had to defend your man. Look at this. They're about to double here. Look, look at the, look at the spread of the offense. Right there, double. Look at this. They're doubling. Knowing that the opponent doesn't. They pass the ball. Look, look at this. This guy's about to, look at this, y'all. Look at this. Michael Jordan's doing right. Look, Michael Jordan's face guarding the guy who can shoot, leaving this motherfucker open. Look, look, look. Let's see if he shoots it. Look, look, look. You can't do that in today's game. Look, he has the ball right here. Trying to, nobody's guarding him, and he's trying to pass it to the guy who can shoot the ball. This guy right here now is now for the Phoenix Suns. This is either Kevin Durant or this is Kevin Durant or Bradley Beal. This guy now is that guy. Look at him. This is a shot. Why you think when you say it's easy to guard somebody, look why. You can properly space out the floor. And when I and shit, and I don't know why he ran it Dan Marley. He couldn't shoot. What about the space out? That's what he's that? doing. Now, what this is talking my about game. running around for no fucking reason. But I do have a lot of facts to back this up. The reason why scoring was so difficult in the 80s and 90s and even in the 2000s. Look at these two niggas right here. What y'all doing? <laughs> these niggas playing patty cake right here. Look at this. Look at this spacing. Look, Jordan said, fuck it. Jordan here. You just guard these two dummies right here. Look, two guys sitting right here. Jordan said, fuck it. I'll go right here. You can guard both of them because they don't know what the fuck they doing. Thousands in comparisons to where we are today. Look at them. Look at them. Come on. Just because of the physicality and hand checking. It's also due to the lack of floor spacing ah, ah. where we are in today's league. is isn't just because of the physicality and hand checking. It's also due to the lack of floor spacing. But the one thing that really oh, makes me clear is when I they didn't challenge it. They didn't challenge the shot. The floor spacing. They didn't but do it. The Look, there's no real challenge. He didn't even jump. He just, you're telling, come on. Who is these guys today? This going to what? Who be? James Harden, Paul George, or Kawhi? That's who that guy's going to be? You can do this to that, the, the era today? Come on. This is why I'm saying, what the fuck are we talking? Please just watch. They not calling illegal defense. They not doing nothing. He didn't put his hand up. Now you telling me you are all-time defensive player? Who are you fucking guarding, though? Shit, at least P.J. Tucker would shoot that shit. They not even. P.J. Tucker's a better threat than these guys. Let's just be honest. To me cringe is when I hear people make arguments like this. If Giannis Antetokounmpo played in the 90s, all the Bucks would have to do is clear out on the weak side. And the funny part is, hes I think he's defending the 80s. <laughs> and allow Giannis to abuse his defender and race at the basket. Now, I promise you, I'm not trying to be that kind of... The Kumbo played in the night and race at the basket. The defensive players would be forced to follow their man outside too far away to help, even if the player they're guarding isn't an outside threat. The only other option is to double-team Giannis and, again, leave your man completely open. So, again, I have to ask, do you even watch the NBA? Because if you did watch the NBA, you would clearly tell that that's exactly what teams do in today's game. Quite frankly, the Houston Rockets have the amount... Look, of look, look listen, nothing has changed. Look. The reason you can't hand check is because of look. 
Where are you putting the hand at? Where are you putting the hand at? As soon as you reach out, he's gone. Y'all remember, I didn't even think to point this out. You remember when I did the video of Isaiah Thomas at the, it was at the TNT at ESPN and he was guarding Baron Davis, right? He was guarding Baron Davis, right? Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember or did y'all ever hear Isaiah Thomas say anything about putting his hand on a hip for a hand check, right? Y'all remember he did exactly this to show you the natural thought. He said, we're going to put this hand up here and we're going to have this hand down here. Just He didn't say nothing about a handshake and he didn't play in the mid 90s. So when he played, they still had this. When he, by the time he retired, they still had this. And he said exactly, we're going to put one hand up here and we're going to have one hand down here. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? It slipped my mind too, y'all. It slipped my mind too. For the last two to three years now. How you gonna hand check? Right. He's gonna put his hand out there. Mainly the problem with he's gonna put his hand out there and James Harden's going to pull up. We forget we got smarter, man. Because of the amount of spacing that they have on their roster. And granted, in today's NBA, you can now look at now look at where these people sit. Now, a smart player. Yeah, I remember when Kobe did this boom, boom, right? Kobe drove. And if this big man would have helped, that's how Shaq got that lob. Players started to realize, if I go downhill, how are you going to stop me? Defense, but due to how prevalent spacing is and forced to play man on man, threats that are constantly on the floor, it is with the illegal defensive rule. The NBA attempted to abolish it most right. of the time. Look, 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 now look at Jordan. Hand checking exists. Right, look, Jordan's not moving yet, so it's easy. Oh, shit, man. People who are right, here you go. We got the hand check right here, right? The illegal defensive rules. And so with all that being said, I do want to leave you on this note. For starters, did hand check. Right, you got the hand check. Now watch exactly what Jordan does. The NBA attempted to abolish Push it. Times, go. Now that was what was illegal. You see what Joe Dumars just did? Checking exists. Right? You got the one hand. To abolish and multiple times, but failed Jordan's going to push it. And then he uses the other hand to stop the moment. The momentum. Obviously the rules were written. But now when it comes to my own personal opinion on hand check, right, hand check. it's completely overrated because majority of teams in the 80s and 90s were right. established offensively with an interior presence. In fact, all the teams first illegal defense, illegal defense even stricter. And I laugh at that because game and players was almost difficult and tried to recently and scoring numbers. Right, so the idea of the hand check coming back is, is he relevant? It is. Like, it is harder now because you have five shooters out there, right? So the fact that you have... Right, you have five guys. Let me just sit there and just draw you a graph. Like, we'll take the Knicks, right? I wish I can do this. I'm gonna get the technology where I can do it here, right? We're gonna have the one. We're gonna have the two. We're gonna have the five. We're gonna have the the the, the, the four and then the three, right? Defense, shit, defense, 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 defense. All right, so look. Oh shit. Okay, so. Look, this is how it looked back then, right? So this guy, two, is going to go set a cross screen for five. Big man is going to come all the way here. So by the time, that, what is this guy doing at the time? Got his back to the basket, trying not to get the ball stolen, right? Now you don't have that. You have, shit, you have the one here, two, three, four, you... Now you got you got fucking offense like this now. When Paul George, Paul George, or what's the name got it? You got five motherfuckers sitting on a on a three point line. That's the difference. That's the it, it ain't that the defense is there's no defense. It's just the problem is when he goes when he goes and he goes to the basket, who's guarding him? Who, who's gonna stop him once he get past this man? The four, boom, three. The three, bam, three. Two men sitting at the motherfucking nail, pass it to fucking. Devin Booker right there, bucket. That's the problem, right? It, 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 that, the problem is there's just, there's no more dead weight. There's no Dennis Rodman, right? You have Draymond Green. Now let's go. Draymond Green, right? Can't you, right? Who do you want to make Draymond on the Bulls, right? We make him Dennis Rodman. Okay, now you have, you know, uh, Looney as Luke Longley. Okay, Pippen is Wiggins. Ron Harper, you see, you see where I'm going? There's no there's no Clay and Curry on, a, on a, at the same time. And that's it. It's it's one of those things where it's just it's but you have to be a basketball player to really add the the game itself. Look, this is what's happened in the game. Offense, offense has evolved, right? Remember back in the day, this used to be right the dribbling, right? There was no side. That was a double dribble, right? You couldn't do that, right? 
So then eventually over time, when Isaiah Thomas came in, you can do a little bit of this, right? We're at a full bottom now, right? So think about, think about the moves that you have here. Come on, what fucking moves? What, what moves do you, what crop? You don't, you ain't got no moves. Now, if I can sit here and, you know, do shit like this, the bag becomes more. So the offensive bag has gotten a lot of leeway, right? It's, it's gotten governed. Defense, what new rules can you give the defense to keep up with the offense? So it's not like the defense has, there's no rules that they have put in that's really changed the game to really handicap the defense, right? Even if you bring back, even if you bring back two hand hand check, I'm trying to tell you, niggas is going to get bopped because this is what, this is what we've been taught. And I'm going to teach you as a basketball player, if you are an offensive guy, if my guy has me like this, right? When I'm driving, as long as he's like this moving, as long as he is in this defensive stand and he's moving like this, he's in a good defense. I don't have nothing over him. I need to go fast enough to get the defense to put this right leg over the left. Now think about what I'm saying. I need to go so hard to force the defense to run like this to try to stop me. Now, what happens is, soon as the defense goes like this, snatch back. I'm just gonna go, and that's where this move, ha! Nigga fail. Hook, hook, hit him with the hit this, and then let's see, he comes here, and then he comes back of it, hesitation going back that way, for him to do that shit again. Right? We learn we need the player to cross his hips before we change direction. So no matter what defense you're doing, we're taught now offensively as great offensive players. When I'm teaching kids, don't change directions until he tries to get in front of you. When you, if a guy is guarding you like this, right? <sighs> Soon as you see this, this shoulder in front of you. So if you're going with me like this, as soon as I see you getting ready, boom, I'm, I'm moving different. If you're on the side of me, I can't change directions yet. When you are trying to beat me, ah, now I'm gonna move in a whole different direction.